coming in half. Both underdogs, both from the EU minor, and both with a chance to go through. I would have picked one of the two, maybe, and I might have leaned toward God sent. And how about the biblical reference, right? If, if hell's going to be raised, wouldn't you send God to fight it? No, send Moses. I would too, actually. You're right. Yeah. I pick him to win that wrestling match, if anyone's wondering. Angel going to push up Sticko as well. We know B is a hot property to try and get bombs down early. They find the first kill. And Dead Fox is there as well, but it's all countered out on the fact that God sent find two, or three, excuse me, to their two. But the problem is they go low on HP and they go back toward Bondic, uh -oh. who funnels them in, takes the bomb away, and just leaves JW far removed. And I think that's why they went back that direction. Low HP and their high HP player all the way back over toward Ivy. They've got to get back over and get him into the play. Bondic's done a great job so far, but they have no idea as to where JW is. He's still got it. 100 HP. He's got the body armor as well. A minute to play with. He's aware of the bomb. He gets himself towards heaven as well. Great position to be in. And he's going to find the first player here. Perfect shot there. Takes down Bondic. Gives his position away there. And the other seat is in the courts connector. Dead box. One on one now. He gets away for now. This thing's quieting down. The bomb is still in the hands of the CT at least. He has an idea of us to where it is, but we'll lose control of it momentarily. I'm waiting patiently as Dead Fox as well has a kit. Prime location to go to either site. Knows the bomb was down at the box, but also has no idea if that's been picked up at this point in time, so it does become a straight up battle. Not sure if that was misleading for us on X ray. I don't think he spotted him on that jump. Certainly didn't act as if he did, especially where he checks hitch, so. It's still on. Bomb picked up. JW, 26 seconds. Would have to run to be if he wants to go. And he's, ooh, thinking about it. I think he may. Into the ladder already. Dead Fox may have heard that because he's starting to consider it, whether or not timing or otherwise. And he's got the vision toward the lower ramp. It is going to be where he shows up from. Not quite ready for the shot, though. And JW is able to slip by. The problem is he's got to get to the default position to plant. Getting there now with Dead Fox as far away as he is. He can do nothing of this. So instead of going hunting and getting closer and giving JW a chance to hear him do so, he stays patiently, sits back. Remember, oh. I mentioned it, no armor, but has the kit, tags up. They're both within reasonable HP of each other, both four part, 51 for JW, but he's got the armor, so that's a slight advantage. Slight. He's also got the high ground, and you're dead right. Smoke for Dead Fox. He can try and get this on the bomb immediately. Has kit, like we say, gets it out, but it blooms a little late, and JW jumps on it immediately. Great work from JW there. Two versus one. So calculated in his approach. Let's just talk about the beginning of this round. It was a three-man aggressive push from the CT. We talk about it all the time, Matt. The T's normally favor towards the inside site. You're normally guaranteed the bomb going down there. They're trying to counter that. They push towards that lower ramp. Confrontations, they get the man advantage there. They actually funnel on towards Popdog. And Bondic did a great work as towards that public area. Got two kills. Bomb down as well. We thought that's it. But JW, so patient. Gets up towards he heaven as well. Out positions that first player. And great mind games there. Getting the bomb down towards inside. Some brave calls there. Jumping towards the Ramp. He gets away with it and stops the bomb being diffused as the smoke's chucked on it. Really, really good stuff from JW. And there will be 1 0 on the T side ever. Godsend, one step closer to that major. And so we're going to round number two. Forced by from the CTs, of course. Dead Fox with that scout. He can be very deadly with that weapon. We've seen it time and time again from this guy. Has been, for me, one of the most impressive breakout performances in terms of what he's been doing for Hellraisers and how he's actually adapted to the role of what Oscar left behind. No one thought he could do it, but uh, he's delivered and then some. I, I, I definitely didn't think he could do it. I remember when he was part of the Pixel Fire squad mm. back at the original EU the last minor, minor, the yeah. first EU minor, actually, even back at PGL and the last minor. And jumping into this team, I thought, all right, Hellraisers, they have the team that survived every roster change in the world. At what point did they finally just fall apart? And I thought that was going to be the start of it, just like Richard said. He stepped up. I'm very impressed with how he's played. JW, though, posting up with the smoke out, is going to be able to get closer on this upper sidewalk position. Zero's down below. Not spotted just yet because JW is waiting for any information of anyone getting aggressive, and it does become a bit of a battle of wits. And Zero might take the advantage here by going up the ladder. <gasps> Doesn't quite get off the ladder oh, to take no. the shot, though. Another further step, and he might have landed on the platform. Yeah, well, it's always going to be a horrible position. You can't shoot on the ladder if anyone's not aware. Lekra now finds an opening kill, takes down Bondic. It will be an outside execution, but now Mercedes coming to life. Stick over the headshot and the Deagle. The scout working out with dead box as well. Stiko, very low on HP, he's going to try and post up to catch off anyone from Pop Dog, but he goes down in that position. Pronax has already slipped in with the bomb. They get another plant. They're down a man, though, and they are very low on HP. Both Pronax and JW. They've got to get back away quickly. Only one kill for Pronax, and look uh, where JW is. Dumb. They could be on this already. I'm not sure they're confident enough. Are they? 10 second defuse. They're going to just barely be confronted by JW. Dead Fox has to read this right, but JW sitting back. I think he's giving it up. He's going to let this go. Just getting out now. There's still a second on it if he can line it up. Not quite. It's going to be Hellraisers that sneak away the round. Yeah, he's so far away from that situation as well. It's that Deagle and Scout combo towards outside. Godsend maybe thought they were going to get away with that a little bit too easy. It comes down to that situation. And then JW, I think he doubted himself. He thought the round was over. Then they're saying they probably don't have kits. He so goes in for it a little couple of seconds too late there, but could have really had a possibility. To win. From where we saw him coming from as well in those tunnels, 
would it not have been faster to go down the ladder where the bomb's planted for a wide peak? Yeah, that, that's true. But I, I think he was kind of doubting to save the weapon at this point. They're obviously going to defuse. I guess they, they weren't 100% sure as to where he was, and he was kind of a bit apprehensive in that respect. But we do have a false weapon godsend coming up. They had a saved AK, so let's see whether they can do anything with this. Two AKs, a Galil, a couple of Eagles as well. Not the best vibe of the CTs. It's going to be back and forth in this game. I can feel it. And it's going to be aggressive play from the CT. Schneider takes down the first player, but Sticko replies quickly with that UMP 4 and 4. It does favor the terrorists for now. Dead Fox can't get on the orb just yet, of course. The money's not really built to a significant level as of yet. Yeah, it's aggressive play for the CTs, as you say, with that trade, giving that up. Yes. If they were on the eco and trying to force the hand, then I would say, yeah, great play. But unfortunately, they've come out really well off the mark on it because they get down to four versus four and you pointed it out stick goes on 28. yeah so that's actually benefited the terrorist if anything they get the only good thing how is it going for them right now they've got the weapons right we've only got two rifles we've got sand a couple of deagles as well but these players especially lecro we've seen what this guy can do with the deagle in the past so don't discount him just yet the smoke towards inside and simple play coming in it seems as they go in leading first with the galil pronax going to be pushing through the smoke it seems things better of it and try and get that bomb down as quickly as possible for zero up is at the first bracket he loves this position we saw, yeah. saw him use it the other oh day. well um, I don't have words sometimes, Henry. <laughs> That's a perfect shot from Flusha. Knows exactly where he is. Pops out one strafe, one shot, one headshot, one done. Angel's going to try and get a little bit further, further forward. Sneaks up the tanker side, but bomb still planted. And upper for JW. The problem is he's lost his teammates. He's going to go alone on this. They've got someone waiting. Sticko, back of that tanker as well, just sitting on the ladder. He'll go try and get the shot when it's ready, and he nails it as well. Nice will be Hellraisers. Not bad, converting it as well after winning the last. Yeah, sticker there, recovering. And actually, like you said, Zero loves that position. Flush doesn't really care how much you love a certain position. He's still going to rip your head off with Beagle. Wasn't quite enough, though. Sticker rotates in, finds three kills, and secures a round for Hal Rose. The bomb goes in, but I think it has to be an eco at this point. For Godsend, here's the replay. After that Desert Eagle, one bullet headshot there, and Sticko, good work, very disciplined towards the upper ramp here. Finishes things off, teammate already on the bomb as well, so good work from Hellraiser, recovering after losing the pistol here. Or winning the pistol, losing the second round, I should say. And now it should be an eco at this point for Godsend. Good thing about trainers, even when you only have the pistols and no armor, you can go for set pieces. It means you can do this set smokes, like they're going to right now. You've got five smokes available. You're smoking all over the outside bomb side. It's the objective purely to get that bomb down. There's a small chance you can win it without the armor. I don't really have much hope for it. So that one smoke goes in. That's to bait out some utility from the CTs. They're trying to like just sell something, see what grenades they throw to start the round. But aggressive, of course, it's Angel. Pushes inside, there's Relentless here, and he's looking for more kills to denying this bomb plant. Fornax does find one for God sent on the way through. Bondic still waiting at the hitch. Game all over the place. Has to be a bit careful because Sticko comes over to bail him out. Thankfully, Dead Fox is also there. So they've got three players because as one gets pulled to the right, Bondic starts missing. Player slips into the left. Thankfully, Dead Fox covers that and everything goes to plan for Hellraisers again this time. So three straight rounds after winning the second. But finally, Gun's going to be pulled back up, and it's going to be five AK-47s. No AWP on the Godsend side. Yeah, well, Dead Fox, and we know how proficient he is with this weapon. He's got a really good Ivy to spawn as well. A lot of the aggressive orpers like to push Ivy, especially in these sort of rounds. At like the first real gun round here, you know the money's not going to be great for Godsend. Maybe push aggressively in towards Ivy. Go for the first pick. Probably won't do it, but it'd be an interesting idea to see whether he can actually go for that sort of aggression to kick things off. I don't think he will. He's going to be by himself. That's a bit, a little bit too audacious. Towards inside we go. This is the default towards Brown Hall, but it's going to be locked out for now. The incendiary's chucked in. That crow's just going to have to hold back for now. We didn't quite see it on our screen. Dead Fox just ate and ate. Literally swallowed it. It landed. It bounced off the railroad tracks in his foot, footsteps and then into his mouth and unfortunately goes down to 49. Now he does have the AWP. Sticko was with him off the start. I thought they might go for the flash in, but JW gets up behind the smoke and behind the server. That gets him a lot closer. They've got to pull the AWP away from it. Sticko now holds off in that position and Dead Fox instead will start hunting toward A-Main. Well then. This is pretty much full default from Godsend. Try to work that first pick. Going to be a difficult affair, all things considered. Like we said, they haven't got that AWP. They know Dead Fox has as well. They've got control of Brown Halls, though. That's actually a very valuable part of the map. It's kind of comparable to Long on Dust 2. It means you can push the CDs back. They don't have vision on the certain bomb site. You can smoke down towards low, lower ramp as well. Flash over. They have got three smokes available. Actually, make it four. So they can go for a full inside execution with this sort of setup. And there are two CDs waiting for them at the moment. That will be Zero and Angel. Schneider trying to show some presence towards outside side. If he can actually maybe smoke off, take a bit of vision away from the CTs, find one kill before his teammates go in, that could be cool. He can also wait up and stop the rotations as well, go for the little backstab at the end. Flush it down already inside the bottom of ramp. Smoke's oh. still in front, but Angel okay. reads it. Why not? I guess the timing of the Molotov, he thought, yep, that'll be when they go, and he's dead right, finds one. So back over toward the A-site instead. That gives Dead Fox a lineup, but unfortunately, as soon as he gets one, his two teammates go down. Bonnick and Sticko found it. Sandwich opens up a lot of avenues to approach. 
for God sent, and Dead Fox has to switch to a Deagle because he's worried of how close they are. Tries to deny plant. JW perfectly positioned to deny that in return. So it's all under Angel 1 versus 3. That was the big kill there. JW protects his teammates. The bomb's going down with 10 seconds remaining. Angel will be saving. I thought he's going to get in towards Ivy and try and push away there. Looking to see what he can do. Waiting for the smoke to dissipate. He's already got one kill for the smoke. See if he can get another. But uh, bomb down at this point. Three and one. He has got a kit, but no nades. Don't really have much hope at this point. But JW is in front of him on low HP. So maybe he can find a kill out of this. Just a horrible angle for him. That's it. I'm going to fall back to this AK now with looks things. Or maybe not. Stick for a second longer. Because, there, yeah, like you say, there is an AK to his right. I guess just take the safe bet. Get out with the M4. But Schneider reads, hey, you're an Ivy. I'm going that direction. And not only that, Leckard snuck into the back halls behind him. So either way he went, he was going to have a confrontation. Okay, then. Well... Got sent. Do you manage to bring it back after losing that first frag towards lower round? Like you said, they had the brown horse control. They had the smoke gun going in there as well. I thought there was a perfect set of go towards inside. It's going to be Angel opening things up. That famous spray through the smoke, but all of a sudden, got sent back towards Alto with 10 seconds remaining as well, finding the big kills there. And it's going to be 3 2 now. There is money available for Hellraisers. Not a ton. You can see there's only one kit available, only an AWP for Dead Fox and Sticko. He's got that. 5-7 as well, a big round for the CDT. If they can pull this one back, it's going to be the pressure on towards dead box here. Back towards inside brown holes we go. It can be quite a standard default with the terrorists. Once you just take away that vision, that's the primary objective. But dead box, he's waiting there this time. A very powerful position. Can't nail the second shot though. Thought he was dead on for it. But you're dead right. Very good position for this AWP to be in. Fortunately, gets Molotov off. They're going to approach. This is a fast play. JW, I love that. Yeah. They throw a Molotov, force him back. JW goes railing over the box, jumps around it, and hits the shot. So now you can take back that position, and Godsent will post up, get ready. Smoke in front, but they can wait on that. He's going to try and pre fire into potentially a closer angle, a little bit high for where the tanker is. Fair. If anything, yes, I am here. Zero loves that position, doesn't he? Straight back to it. Yeah, he was doing very well in it yesterday, managing to get multiple frags that came towards the inside side. He'll be tested once again. They have got the man advantage for now. A few flashbangs remaining for the CT. There are... Okay, there is a smoke available for Godsend. He can just throw that in lower ramp. I think they're going for more of a contact play here. The surprise pounce approach, but uh, I'm not going to find Angel just yet. Remember, that spool is spammable. Pronax, he's so close to it. Has to go. Good positioning. Gets in. Angel focused on high. Will get taken down. An angel focused on high. How many biblical references can we get in one single game, Henry? I think you could probably crowbar about maybe 16 in. I wouldn't say, I would say it's a little more gracefully than a crowbar. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take pride in my work. Pronax does as well. Takes down Sticko. That's going to leave it now to a two versus two high ground for JW. AWP, good shot, finds zero. Second player, same spot. So they're trying desperately to get that high ground gone. They know how powerful that is in a post plant, but I think at this point, Gone is the word for what Bondic is going to try and do with his weapon. Yeah, he's just trying to throw that smoke on the bomb. Maybe speculate to them that he might be trying to defuse here. Maybe he'll have to go down with the explosion, but Bondic is out. It'll be saving the M4. It's a difficult buy there overall for Hellraiser. They do find that opening pick, like we said, that all towards the brown horse out of the upper round position. Gets the first kill. If he lands the second, that's actually a really interesting prospect at that time. Can actually potentially win the round for his team. Does not happen, and it will be 3 3 now. As God sent, tie things up. They managed to take the orb themselves. They anticipate JW will be wielding that weapon. Schneider, I'd say the secondary orb at this point, but uh, JW certainly the primary. He's on eight frags right now, and Hellraisers don't really have much to work with here, apart from a PT-50, one M4A1S, and uh, a flashbang. So maybe a push towards Ivy. You can see them setting up for that right now. Got to be going for it as well. Bondic leading the charge. Maybe just a battle to get position rather than a push all the way through because they slow that down. They'll go now, flash out, Bonic peaks, but meanwhile, they've already gone in the front of the site. Good shot from Flusher. Sprays in and Sticko walks back toward it. Pronax will follow that up, but going down, throws Bomb, thankfully caught by Lecro on the way by, and he'll plant it immediately. Watch, though, because they're boosting above the smoke, and he's actually in a lineup position. They find the first shot on Schneider with that boost as well. Spot him up. He's got to go down here shortly, but he runs out of ammo. Oh, that's so massive, because Bondic had it in position, still manages to find Lecro afterward. Three versus two, and they're going desperately quick toward that Bomb. They've got a kit as well. But, yeah, they've got a kit, but JW is still in position. I've got to take him away from this. Goes to a nade instead, knows he's likely to get pushed, and as such, Flush is waiting for them to do so. Give up position to watch the bomb at this point in time, just for a second, because they have to take the fight instead. Bonnick's got a kit. He's going to get on that. He's already got This is done. Three seconds, nothing JW can do. Zero's posted, waiting for him to wrap back out. Gets the kill as well. 
Massive round there for Hellraisers. Who would have thought Bondic with one M4 as well. That nice little boost towards Ivy. Great work from him. Takes that first player down. They have no idea where he is. Drops down, finds another one as well. The pistol's pushing up in the meanwhile. And then you can see the terrorist in a horrible position has to defend this bomb. It comes down to JW. A great clutcher in his own right, but not really much he can do about this. That saved kit is actually very beneficial to Hellraisers there. Defending him while he's getting that five second defuse in and Godsend can't do anything about it. They get the bomb down, but they do actually get themselves in quite a difficult situation in terms of the economy. Three AKs now, a Tech-9 and a UMP. Smack towards Alta and we'll see whether this inside push by the looks of things works out for Godsend. We'll be heading towards those brown holes once again. Not gonna have any heavy confrontation to kick things off. Actually one passive player towards the site itself. Angel and Zero, both gonna go back over to high side. Zero likes to play it on Spool. Zero likes to play it below, so they've got a bit of an interesting crossfire, if you will, set on that side. But again, Zero, he has to pick up a kill. I'll give him credit, but he's starting to sit back so far that when Angel goes down, he can't do anything to trade it. Flash is well timed. Or rather not, because it was actually, I thought it came out from the T side. It would have been perfect if it were. It was actually CT thrown, and unfortunately, they walk out from connector into it. They still find the man advantage. It'll be P for Dead Fox as well on this retake. And post top, hold the angles and allow the rifles to get slightly more aggressive. Ah. The smoke out, they've got to find the angle. Sticko manages ah. one on Allegro, and there's exactly what the AWP does. Stare down the lane and yep. wait for it. Pull the trigger at the right time. It's going to be Dead Fox. Finds two kills this time. Starting to come to life now. Has been one of the most exciting players at this event so far. In terms of finding these big results, Hellraiser's on 2 0 right now. And it's at the hands of this man on your screen right now. It's gonna be 5-3, another big round for Hellraiser to pick up. That should surely break the economy down of Godsend at this point. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a loss bonus building up, but not a huge amount to work with, so maybe just some Deagles and PD-50s at this point. And here it is from the POV of Dead Fox. Finds that final frag, the PVs comes in, they keep three players alive as well. Problem is for Hellraiser, their money's not an amazing position, so they wanna make sure they keep all five players alive going into round number nine here. I haven't got a huge amount to go up against. It is gonna be Deagles and PD-50s, but they have got those five smokes once again. I explained this before, Train is a very set piece orientation map if you can get the five smokes down towards that side get that bomb down with the lost bonus building up as well it can be very beneficial for the team one window thrown for one smoke from flusher lands outside to cover off a full wall complimentary of godsend on the site but sending their regards in return sticko's found two kills he's got the high ground on green train he's up for a third one as well schneider Managed to get it as well. Not many bullets left to do it. Still finds the head. Gets his fourth. fourth. He's looking for the ace. Flushes in front of him, but Angel's going to take it instead. Had to. Yes. Duel. Might as well just get it over with. Never mind self glorified rounds when you're in the middle of qualifying for a major. Remember, winner does move on. Yeah, well, we really wanted to get the bomb down there for God's sake. We give an extra $800 per player. Doesn't happen. So the orbs on a possibility here. So they will be getting a buyout, sure, but it's five AKs. Limited utility is enough for the five smokes and a couple of incent, uh, Molotovs here and there, but orbs still out for Hellraisers as they extend their lead to three now. 6 3. As we're going to round number 10, certainly one of the most seeky sided maps in the game right now, Matt. So this is, it's okay for both sides right now. It's still quite early days. Still got five rounds to go. And we'll see whether Godsend can add a few more to their tally. Seem to be focusing on these brown holes quite early on, but it looks like Angel going to be challenging this time. Push through the smoke. I like this, but it takes a ton of damage. It goes down to 19. He wants to get out now. Successful in his escape. Oh, that's so scary because he yeah. doesn't run right because it gives the footsteps. He just one bullet sprayed in his direction. That could be it. He just wants to walk out of it. Such a tense moment there, but he does manage to negate the bullets. And it will be Lecro clearing out this upper position once again. This is more of a deep one right now. You can see JW, he's towards Ivy. And we have got Schneider as well towards main entrance. No one really committing at this point. No one wants to give anything away. Yeah, of course, Lecro though, looking a little bit lively towards the upper ramp. He's trying to show presence here. And the bomb's going to be towards the brown holes as well. All right, at this point. Every single round zero is there with a counter for it. They know it. They can peek it from low quickly with pre-aim. There's got to be a utility. There's got to be a way to deploy a Molotov or a Flash easily to get him out of that position every time. Flash is going to cop one in the face, speaking of flashes, but they'll still get through. Pronex down, has bomb, looking for the cross. Zero has relocated, but it's going to cost him because he's caught in transition. And as a result, four versus three. After plant situation favoring Godsend. Yeah. Bondic's going to rotate fast up the ladder now, if I'm not mistaken, though. Where's the, where's the rotation coming in from behind? So interestingly enough, it's JW outside. I thought he was coming into the tunnels. I just got to him in time, but Bondic's going to go back down, back away. This is giving it up because one versus four, nothing he could do. JW going to find him as well with the AWP. Nice little round there from Godsend. They get control of the upper platforms there, the brown holes. We normally say they've been doing that consistently, but this time it's a little bit different. They've got one player towards Ivy, one at main entrance as well to Schneider. Sure, Schneider goes down, and then 
JW comes to life there at the Ivy, finds a kill, and as soon as he does that, his teammates are executing towards inside. They run down that lower ramp, they find the seat. He's out of position almost. Now in the first headshot as well, zero drops, and then the plant comes in. Not really much how racers can do. They're not 100% sure as to where they're committing to with the presence towards outside and the inner sight as well. So a nice run there from Godson to recover and close the gap now. 6 4. Still money available from both sides after Hellraisers in that previous eco. Managed to keep all five alive. So we're trying number 11 now. Orp available for JW as well here. And Necro towards Ivy we go this time, mixing things up. No inside presence really just holding this almost uh, exact mirror of what we had last round. This time focusing on this side and JW opens things up. Taking down Sticko. That's the time to pounce. John JW puts on up to 13 kills. Schneider, he's going to find Perfect. Bondic as well. Great positions in toward the site. You're dead right. Perfect is the word. They've hardly taken any damage. Bomb's going to go down already at a minute and 20. Yeah, it doesn't really get much better than that. Go for a pick towards Ivy. Get it nice and fast. You can hit at that point. Catch a CTs. All a little bit discombobulated. And as soon as you're doing that, taking all the aggro towards the Ivy area. Your teammates are facing for a pop dog and main entrance as well. Getting them in the back. There's not really much you can do about it. It doesn't get much better than that in terms of a round for Godsend. They lose one player. So I guess that's the only caveat to that one. But uh, here's the initial shot from JW. Oh, and he gets his elbow as well. Really nice work from him. And you can see that's a really nice call from Prona. As soon as they get that kill, he's pouncing. He's getting out of that alley area before they have a chance to actually be aware as to what's going on and really kind of work out the rotation. So here we go then, Flusher. He brings out a Mac 10. This is actually the perfect call. It means you're a lot more mobile. You can throw yourself into positions like the lower ramp or rush Ivy. You're against unarmored players here. Farm some money up and not give too much away if you do go into these choke points first. So push out to the halls. There it is. God sent, but Flusher, like you say, Mac 10 is going to go very fast. He's going to spot this stack as well. It's perfect. It, it, it's dead right. It, it's finding out exactly what they're up to early on. There's the call. Go for you guys. Yeah. I've already spotted at least three. Found the fourth behind the bomb train. I've got the gun to farm the cash. You guys go get the job done. Yeah, he's, he's, he just wants to stay alive at this point. If he finds extra kills, that's an absolute bonus as well. He's found three so far. Just farming that money, money, baby. And it's going to be the final oh. kill as well. Looking oh. for the ace. Oh, Schneider, <laughs> why do you do this? He went at an ace with a Mac-10. It was like he was shooting bots to start that off. Peeking yep. out, and they were just staring at him like, uh, 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 yeah. can't do anything about it. Well, there it that's is. So sick. Ties things up at 6-6 six, six as well. And how how well... Six, so sick, six, six? So sick, six, six. If, uh, six, if, six. if they made a point on the desk that you can echo the sentiment of, think back to the Fnatic days, the glory days, Flush and JW at majors. That was yeah. the peaks of their performance. Absolutely. It's not a major, but it's their first time having to qualify in that sense and showing off well. What was interesting as well, this wasn't part of the plan for Godsend. They had the team that was almost guaranteed the yep. major spot, right? They had the three players ready to go. And it all went kind of wrong at that point. They started getting horrible results, but they're still just kind of thinking, well, we still got the major boys. Let's practice for the major. And Crims leaves. And here we are. And I think this is probably quite character building for them. They want to have these kind of tests going into this sort of event. They weren't necessarily ready to go straight into a major. So it's good to have these sort of tournaments coming in. It yeah. seems like they're getting better and better, right? So they're 2-0 right now. One game away, and they're now 6-6. Six, six, and looking very good to win 3-0 here. It'd be the first team to go through to the major. That'd be a really cool story. It would be an exceptional story. And it's, it's starting to shape up at the right time. You know, Astralis was in their slump. A lot of people were looking at Liquid, Gambit, flip side, saying, oh, we've got four legend teams that shouldn't be there. Gambit showed very well at DreamHack Winter. I'm excited for them, especially yeah. Hobbit. I want to see him on the main stage. And Astralis has peaked at exactly the right time, so we're shaping up in a good position for this upcoming E-League Major in January. Good last play from Flusha once more, as well as going to find Sticko top fragger. For Hellraiser's gone already. Unfortunately, though, they do lose Lecro. Angel had good position, and a flash came through at exactly the right time. But they are going to push Bonnick out of position. Having Sandwich is crucial. We talk about chess matches and just having position to cover off angles and take aggro away. That's exactly what he can do being posted up between those trains. Unfortunately, they are man down, so they've got to force the issue, and that's what Pronax is exactly trying to do with two players facing. Nice. Great shot from Dead Fox. Yeah, nice reaction there. He wasn't even looking towards that angle. Nice flick shot from him. Three on two now. Schneider pulls one back. Still anyone's round at this point. Schneider and Flusher, both on about half HP. Bombs down for now, but we can see it will be Schneider rotating all the way through T-Spawn towards Ivy. I'm not sure they'll be expecting this. We have got one player in the form of Angel in towards that area, but we be more focused on the bomb right now, but it does change his attention towards Ivy for now. The timing's just so nasty for him, but he does go back, and both players nail the shot at that point. Harrow is to take the lead once again. A faster round there from Godsend. Not necessarily working the picks. Going quite aggressive at the start. This is the first kill from Dead Fox. This time gets the better of JW, so he can fall back there and start hitting some more shots as well. That was a really nice one on towards Pronax. So, money's still going to be ringing true for Godsend, and then some double orb set up on the T-side map. Certainly unorthodox. Can be quite difficult to make 
it roll effectively, you know, but still, if it means you're going to slow things right down, you get over those initial picks at the start, maybe towards main entrance and Ivy at the same time, just try and get the, both the picks going. If that does happen for you, you pretty much won the round. If you don't, if you get locked out by the smokes and stuff, you have to slow it right down and maybe go for an execution. That's when you're a bit of a problem there. Oh, God. That's perfect. Start it off again. And look how fast he gets in position for the next one. Knows, all right, I've got B. Rotation's got to be coming over. Hits it again. <laughs> Doesn't quite land the third, but JW is rolling this weekend. Yeah, he absolutely is. That was really flashy stuff. That's some, like, vintage JW. He's back, it seems, in terms of that play style. The stuff no one expects, no one else does. Rushing towards inside, finding that first pick. Get the second as well. Win the round by yourself. He's going hunting, too. He's not done. He's going to try and push all the way back round towards spawn. Catch them when they walk out from Ivy. This is perfect. I'm excited. This 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 gets me excited to see Godsent playing at this fashion. It's, as long as they can convert this, I mean, let's not discount Hellraisers. They could easily get the spot in the Major as well. We're talking as if Godsent's <laughs> the only one still with a chance here. There's the third for JW. It, it's really difficult as an analyst to like, tell you what he did right there, right? Because no one else can really do that sort of stuff. It's not traditional CS. It's not really how the game should be played. Like, let's get double ult on the T side. You've got a six one. You just want to go pick low around as fast as you possibly can. Do you want to get three kills after that as well? Like, it's just such a, a godlike move from him, just pushing into that position. He looks so confident here, does he not? As soon as he gets that kill, most teams will fall back at that point. So we've got the man advances, leave it. He goes in, locks off the rotation as well, dodges that flashbang, and that's it. Round over, just like that. Goes back towards C-spawn, gets a bit more as well. Lovely, lovely stuff from JW. And he manages to bring it back to 7-7, like we said. God is joining us. And you want to play along at home? This is a CT-sided map. And it's looking very promising for Godsend. They bring the auto sniper up, Electro. Very, very odd to see it on the T side of train. It's yes. definitely viable on the CT side. Yep. But I guess against this spy doesn't really matter. The spam Ooh. it does make sense. Guardian style spam. Guardian loves to free fire. The shot goes in towards Z connector. That's where those bullets. Does he drop end the order sniper now? I think so. Yeah, yeah, he's going back to spawn. So they've got an AK waiting for him. Throw that over the fence. There's actually two AKs there posted up in case JW perhaps wants to go to the other one. I'm not sure if that's something that's viable considering how well he's playing on the AWP. And speaking of, he's deep inside the site already. Does back away. Schneider's there to protect if they do push down from Sandwich, cover off Hell Alley. And while they sit and wait, Pronax has made his way out toward Ivy. Flusha and Lecro will start to find ways over toward B. So very slower pace, or slowed pace this time from Godsent. Try and get a default, get a pick. Well, they know the money is going to be really poor for Howard at this point. That's testament right now. If you look at their buy, it's going to be two UMPs and uh, a 5.7 and a Famous as well. The Orb is in the hands of Dead Fox as well. But let's see where he would be posted up. He's actually going to be towards Ivy once again. Has been quite an equal exchange towards that area. I'm going to be overcommitted right now. Wants the tease to actually walk into his crosshair at this point. But we can see Godsend setting up some sort of inside approach with the bomb coming towards that area as well. And the fact they have two smokes and some Molotovs left over. I'm sure they'll have the AWP walk down to lower to lower round potentially as well. It's the first Molotov. Angel. I think he's too confident here. He's got the 5-7. Everything's just falling down around him as well. Molotovs behind him. JW is waiting again for an opportunity. Slides the wall. Still has a smoke in front that's just dissipated. Fast play! You would expect him almost to hit it the way he's been nailing shots today, but it's actually going to work out brilliantly for Hellraisers because as soon as that happens, flank comes in, second kill follows up. All right, then. And down goes everyone. Wow, UMPs, 5 7, that's all you need, apparently. A much slower approach, Jeff and Godsend. Not as. Uh enthusiastic as they were before, trying to walk into the side, waiting for the smokes to go down, and timing's working out for the CT side, especially with that UMP as well. Here's the shot from the 5-7. Like you said, you'd expect JW to hit in that kind of form he's in right now. Flasher recovers one with zero, doing fantastic work with that UMP. And we go to the second half now. Hellraisers lead 8-7. Against all odds as well, I thought Godson were going to win this half, considering the buyers going into that one. We had an auto sniper, orbs everywhere, AKs on the floor, tons of money to work with, but just can't find the frags this time. But you mentioned it, CT-sided map, 8-7, quite very, quite impressive. It's a very good situation to be in. JW, though, hitting incredible shots. There's a flick toward upper. This was the round you said. Nails that, gets in position, knows the rotations are coming. Posts, waits, count it down, nailed <laughs> it. Nightmare for night. Enjoy that point. He knows what's coming and has to go for it. But uh, here we go, then. Crim's watching from home, it seems. He My is playing a lot. Mothers, his old teammates, teammates that he was actually with, Crims was like drowning in a peaceful sea, rescued by the sinking ship, over to Godsend. He's like, bail out, bail out, I'm going back in the water. He's going to, going to familiar territory, back over to Fnatic. Like you said, that actually gave Godsend the legendary spot for a bit, but yes. it's good to see he's still friendly with them, and he's dead right there, playing a, a, a familiar style that we've missed watching as Counter-Strike fans. 
JW, 16 kills so far and uh, nine deaths. A great, great performance from him as well. Sicko's been very efficient as well. Good rotations from him, finding frags in very key situations as well. So I've been impressed with his form going into it. But JW certainly being the MVP so far. Like we said, this is vintage JW. I think that's more than accurate at this point. He's been a, a quiet year in terms of since the Fnatic era kind of slowed down completely. They've kind of made this adjustment. It feels like he hasn't been quite himself recently, but now we're starting to get some glimmers of it. So interestingly, we, we are playing obviously with the new Valve rule, Valve endorsed event, we're qualifying for a Valve major. You have the four timeouts, 30 seconds apiece. Coaches are allowed to talk before, during one of those four timeouts and at halftime. Halftime, they are allowed three minutes. Every team's entitled yeah. to it. A lot of times teams rush it. They want to keep the momentum going. They want to jump right back in. Eight, seven score line, back and forth affair, qualifying with the win. Yeah, exactly. They're taking it. They you want, want to make it sure you like, if you can get a 3-0 here, both of these teams are underdogs. No one expected these... Two. Okay, maybe not so much Godsemmer. No one expected Hellraiser to be part of the top eight, right? Godsemmer's only a dark horse. No one's expecting him to go straight in there with 3-0. One of these teams are going to the major after this half. It will be the first team to go through as well. So this is kind of exciting. We'll get to the pistol then, shall we? Hellraiser smoking towards outside. Angel going to be going out by himself. He's the decoy as his team is getting ready to go in there. It's all about his distraction. Can he make anything happen? Apparently not. Lecro punishes him. And towards inside we go. And already wrapped it up, or fast play, flush his way to McCantland shot. Snyder there to bail him out and do exactly that, though. It's two lovely headshots as they line up on the way through. Lecro's going to rotate in, gets to lower, drops the wow. ball all the way down inside of the site. They've turned this. You said decoy, but rotation's on point. Dead Fox has to nail a shot on five players, not just the first one on flush that he's achieved. Got four more to go. Yeah, not really much Dead Fox to do about this 24 HP. So let's just break that round down. You can see exactly what Hellraiser is doing. They smoke out towards Alta as well. There's the smoke going in. That takes the vision away from the CTs. And there's one player, Angel. He's got to be the distraction. He's got to cause some rotations. Force the players from inside to go Alta. He gets his head blown off straight away. Schneider's there, rotating from Connector as well. Just hitting some beautiful USP shots there. And a lovely round from Godsend. Didn't ever look pressured at all there. If we go to round number 17, it will be Hellraisers. Without that bomb going down, I would assume a force buy coming in. But not meant to be, it seems. Going to go for the more conservative approach that first gun round. Some deagles. No smokes or flashbangs, so don't hold your breath too much on this one. Going to be looking for the one digs. But Train certainly has got the options for them, but it's, it's not as easy as maybe... The choke points like Mirage, you go towards middle and challenge the window, for example. You have to really commit and uh, go into a crossfire before you can actually find any real frags that are available. Crazy thing is, you say both these teams had an outside chance. I would have put God said maybe as one of the last of the teams yeah, to go uh, that's, through. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, 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 but the crazy part is, they're both 2-0 and right now. They're both on the brink of going through. I could easily see these teams going down to 1-2. and two, And with the bracket that currently exists, there's a chance that they, they could still get knocked out. Like, this so is anyone's right? game. Exactly. Get it done while you've got the chance. Lecro finds a good shot on his sticker. That's the second in the round for Godsend, but Hellraisers do respond with one of their own. It's Schneider, the man who opened it, to fall. As Lecro slides back out, we'll find zero. Six HP. Just be very careful in behind the E-Box. It is penetrable, but not really easily so. You've got to find the right angle. They do have Deagles, so it could be done. They back away instead, and Angel, the last player remaining with good HP, is gone. It leaves Bondic on five. Yeah, not really much chance getting this bomb down, I'm afraid. Bondic. 5 HP, just hoping that he can hit the 1D here. That's about as good as he's going to get. Hasn't got any armor to save, so he might as well go for it. Going to be edging out of towards Pop Dog here. There is Lecro on very low HP, but I don't think that frag is available towards him. He's actually in the connector right now. So Bondic, believe it or not, there is a sliver of a chance. If he chooses correctly on where to plant the bomb, he has got a decent position here. It could be a possibility. This is actually a real life thing right now. He's actually chosen the correct position. Lecro. Oh! Oh, God. He's actually going to get a kill here. Okay. You thought he was going to. Don't get to. too excited, Matt. It's not happening. Uh, you know, I was I was quite stoic in all of that. Yeah. I, I was getting a bit excited there. I thought it was going to happen. Get the killing connector. Get towards inner. You never know. Anyway, Godsend do run away with it. And Hellraiser's will presume to be on a pretty similar buy to what last round. They didn't fully invest. So they can get some like, more PT-50, perhaps. A smoke, it seems. They're going for the set piece. We talked about this in the first half. Trying to get that bomb down. Mainly you'll go towards outside. They've got a Deagle and a PT-50, make it two of those. A flashbang as well. So you smoke towards outside purely just to get the bomb down here. It's very unlikely they'll win the round, but unless someone goes wild with a Deagle, it, there is a, a small glimmer of hope here, but aggressive from the CTs, they take down Angel. Yeah. I was waiting for the Deagle shot to just come in with the lovely reactions, but not to be statistically straightforward. There's the 10 smokes. rounds potentially for Godsent. You're right though, Smoke's landing outside. Does give them a wall a chance to try and get this bomb in place. It's already up toward E-Box. As they get closer, Sticko's actually gonna get that down because he slips in undetected. They found all the others. 
Bar Dead Fox, who still waits out inside of A main, but won't plant in right before the first gun round. Not a bad situation. They'll be able to buy up a lot more. Now, question is, I'm just going to check it. Yeah, they can actually get Dead Fox onto the AWP with that. So he'll have enough. 3250. They're going to pick up 2400 in this round. Plus the bomb going down, so an additional 800. 6450 is where he ends up. Easily get out an AWP with armor and a slight bit of utility. Actually, yeah. I think that back would be. Well, not force buying has uh, paid dividends for Hellraisers here. They didn't force buy in the second. They get the bomb down in the, um, the third as well. So good work from them. They get the AWP out, head armor on Dead Fox as well. The grenades they need to actually execute it is 10 for Godsend. And they're on the CT side here. But this is a big round. You can see a little bit of bonus mentality here. JW sticking with the Max 7. Legro and the Famous as well. Just means they're not they're taking a little bit of a chance here, not grading their weaponry to go for maybe the AWP or the M4 as well. Going for that lesser weaponry. This is why Hellraisers want to go a bit faster here. So out the main entrance for now. Some nades coming in as well. It looks like a default for now. No one over committing just yet. Mag 7 gets in toward the ladder. One of the better positions for that shotgun to play on this map. Does he really fancy going up this? We've seen Flush hit a shot that caused three casters to have an orgasmic moment, but that was with a pistol and JW in a gun round. I'm not exactly expecting him to push. He'll rather wait to be pushed in turn. Flashes go down and he actually reads that. They were both thrown correctly, no bouncing. But it tags them up onto 10 HP. Schneider tries to go to the hedge. Bonix already slid in because JW's not watching the front of the site. He's busy occupied with the player above. That gives Dead Fox a chance to get the AWP posted to hold him in. This is actually looking all right for Hellraisers. The problem is they've lost the bomb on the way through. Didn't quite get it planted in time. And Flusha still has a chance. A slim one. JW was found. I said Dead Fox was watching him to win this out because bomb's down to his left. The question is, can he spot that? He's right beside him. But he's trying to murder until he looks at it. Either way, Angel gets the shot. Well, there it is. Like we said, though, I'm going to carry it away. Godson went into that one. The shotgun and the famas. They're trying to make this as strong an economy game as possible for them. So they're going to be going in with another full buy here. And uh, Heroes do a good job there. Nice default. Working together. That aggression towards Popper with the shotgun doesn't work out for them. It actually gives his position away. And as it goes towards outside, they've actually eradicated the player. They can keep their eye towards Pop Dog. Take him out of it. Flasher trying to do what he can. I don't think he ever anticipated to win that round. He's just trying to find as many kills as he possibly can. Try and damage the money of Hellraiser going forward, but he can't find anything. So the all comes in for JW, though. That's the exciting part of this round. Pronax on the UMP, but these guys have shown time and time again. The UMP can be very deadly in the right hands as we go to round number 20 here. Zero is actually going to be going very fast towards the Brown Hall. Similar mentalities to what Godson were doing in the previous half. Get control of this area. Don't necessarily have to commit. Just take the vision away from the CTs and keeps the rotations towards that side of the map. Out at the corner to push back any potential invaders or EWPs for that matter. And that take advantage of the accomplishment of map control to try and take this B site. Inside of it, though, they do a flush out waiting perfectly in the lane, but flashed off through that new window. I see new yeah, map's been around for a while, but it's certainly something that didn't exist before, and therefore has to give up the lane. That causes the cross and a little bit of confusion because flush peaks both directions. Realize Bondix a lot closer. Not only that, smartly, they're going to push very far forward in this site. Catch off Lecro, cover off rotations, and this is where God sent. It's early days yet in terms of economy being dwindled away that quickly. I should take that back. They're actually only really right around $300 or three-digit money on most of them, so they'll go for this, saving it. It's an option, but with Pronax already pushed up, they're going to commit. Bondix waiting for that. He's going to potentially swing at the right time. One's already evaded him and gone by on the right, but Smoke out on his left, push through. Schneider doesn't quite see it just yet. I think he's got vision of him now, but just gets around the corner. In the meantime, Pronax very far forward. Unfortunately, Bomb at this point is too far gone. And Bondic as well is going to watch. Be ready for the exit. He'll go down with Bomb or Willie. 12 HP, doesn't matter. Schneider's going to find him. Well, Matt, I just want to just illustrate right now as to what went so nicely there on towards the inside execution. So we've got Smokes coming down towards this area here and this one here. And then the idea when the terrorists are coming in, you're trying to isolate this area here for the CTs, right? They're rotating in. We've got Molotovs landing in from all the areas, coming in from here and here. And then we've got the terrorists pushing down all these lanes, stopping the rotations. That can be such a positive thing for the CTs to do. If you can get in nice and quickly, find that first trade, it's actually very powerful. CTs can't really do too much about it. You saw how locked out they were there at the beginning of that round. So nice work there from Hellraiser. They bring things to 10-10. And it's going to be now a little bit of an uh, interesting situation for Godson. They managed to get AWP up and an M4, but uh, there's a saved weaponry from the previous round. So we'll see what they can do here. It's going to be JW opening things up, though. Takes down Dead Fox. Good start from them, though. Still a lot of work to do here. Pronax is dancing on the edge of that smoke to try and find vision through it. Angel's there. To P250, that range is pretty lethal. Gets away as well without any damage because he just runs and guns. So too will flush up, backs away as... 
They spot up him. Now the information is gained on either side. You can call that a bit of a positive situation for Godsend, but it's on either side of the map. So really, how are you going to rotate off of that? And they've been pushed back off of it. Which bodes well for Hellraisers now. They do go down a man, losing Dead Fox. Schneider with the M4 is also in a reasonably good position. I think he's aware of it. Lovely shot. Yeah, well, decent position, but you, know, you got to check it. It makes it a little bit uh, weaker at that point. It's just hoping the terrorists don't have that awareness. So four on four for now. And he's going to be the AW up for the AW up, the AWP up for JW this stage. That's the only weapon they have now after Schneider drops four on four. Things equalize. We have got 35 seconds overall map control gain apart from the inside control from Sticko here. It's going to be a bit of a fake though. He actually smokes down towards the lower ramp. Flashbang comes in towards the Pop Dog and now Zero. They will be striking towards outside. One player towards Ivy as well as Angel and JW looking to hit the next shot. Nails it as well. It's going to drop the bomb temporarily inside of the site. Sticko's got to wrap around and try and get to it. Angel being gone already. This is looking very good for Hellraisers even though they don't have the weapons. Bondic's position could change that though. They just get the boost done before he wraps toward Hitch. And Lecros found him. I would have expected him to at least get the jump on one player. Bates out bomb plant. They've lost the boost, so they can't sneak over. Sticko tries as he might. Won't be able to cover them all off. It's going to be guns grabbed in a situation where Godsent was down in terms of weaponry. Well then, JW does an amazing job there, holding the rotation as well. It's that big kill from Pop Dog. Great awareness from him. As soon as he nails that shot, the bomb's dropped, and it's just an absolute nightmare for Hellraiser to try and recover that as well. They have a Molotov in towards Connector, but it's not quite enough. It's a little bit of a, a fumble to try and get that plant down as well. They lock him down, have the man numbers to actually push towards him, deny it, and it's going to be 11-10 on a round that maybe Godsen didn't deserve to win there, but still did a great job. JW stepping up after Schneider lost his weapon as well. So we're going to round number 22. I think Hellraiser are taking a pause at this point. Is the replay, the boost coming in as well. Lecker actually managed to get this kill after his teammate to a Molotov doubt. So nice work from him. And you can see him just pushing on. Great timing. Well then, timeout comes to an end. It is 11-10. Got to take the lead once more. Very back and forth game so far. Not quite clear as to who's going to be taking this one. But it falls right now. Godsend considering the buy for Hellraisers. A PT-50, zero. Just a PT-15. That's it. No armor, no nades. And his teammates on AKs and Galils here. Dead Fox jumps quickly down into the ward, the lower position. And we'll start to see those tactical timeouts get used, I think, on both sides, regardless of score. Talk about this, get it figured out. We saw Jonta as well standing in behind Hellraisers. Remember, he was part of the organization with Flipside for a long time. Helped build them into what they are, and they're now a legendary team. So he brings some experience in that sense. Zero must have died after the time in that previous encounter, because he's got a PT-50, and that's it. And no armor, and he's got $200, so. Yeah, I would say so. Must have, uh, we just must have missed that, but still, that's uh, why he's got nothing at all. If you're not aware, that's what I'm talking about. You die after the regulation time finishes in a round, and then you go down, you go into the next one with no money whatsoever. Terrorist side. Terrorist side only, of to course. To clarify. Dead Fox will now start to probe out toward the lower position. He's got Bonnick in front of him. Sticker will be the utility man. Well, he's got Angel with him now, too. Zero, the only one going high. And he's the one with the pistol, so he's just trying to find shots, find information. He's going to be covered off by the fact that Z is held right now by Lecro Flush of the Wall. Oh, this has got to be careful. He's got to get off the ladder and find his aim. Manages one, but they're so close. Where's the wrap in? Angel, all he had to do is look to his right. He would have found Flush instead. He goes down. Lecro finds the kill on him, and it's just Zero now responding. I would have thought for sure they would have found better entrances than that. Zero, though, is in good position, and he's doing an excellent job as well. He finds now his third, but the problem is he's got to go for an ace to win it out. Bomb gets planted, but he'll do nothing of the sort to hold them off. Yeah, it's a valiant attempt there, but unfortunately for him, only find three. Only, it's a difficult thing to say, but his teammates can't find another frag, so if he had more bullets than the AK, maybe he could have found the fourth as well, but it will go down. And we'll have a look at the loss bonus as well for the terrorists. The bomb going down, I think they're a third stage after this one. So... It's a decent attempt, but Flasher, great position there. Finds the first set, gets good information. His teammate is spraying him down as well. He finds that second kill and picks up the AK-47. Zero will find him eventually, but there it is. We go into this one, round 23. It's only second stage lost spinners, I beg your pardon. So, the bomb going down, it doesn't actually justify a buy here at all. It's about $2,500 average on the team, so we'll see what they can do here. I think they've just gone for some deagles across the board. Dead Fox is that Glock, of course, he is the AWPA. And we'll see what he can do around number 23. No utility purchased at all. Maybe it's an inside rush. Sticko going to be leading the charge. Wants to go the longer route here. Looking for the 1D. See if any one decides to go aggressive towards inside. But it's just going to be flushed there with that UMP. JW waiting for an opportunity. One wisp spy as Dead Fox jumps in the air. But he's not dead just yet. 
Fox again. Miss shot. Meanwhile, Snyder and Pronax doing all the work. GW still looking for it. It's going to contain Dead Fox's position. Sticko's managed to pull one back. But Bomb's going over toward B. And interestingly, Sticko, with his individual kill, opens up the site. Gets quite far down the lane, but can't find the headshot on the Deagle. Another shot from Lecro, who follows that up. And he's starting to come alive. 16 kills. Pretty close for everyone now, including JW, still only just on 20, not far ahead of Schneider on 17. We'll get back to that because it's all kicking off for Godsend. They're up three rounds with three to go away from the E-League Major. Indeed, indeed. 13-10, and the money is available now for Hellraisers. Can get a nice full buy here. Dead Fox, so he would be glass cannon if he wants to buy the AWP. Opts against it. I think that's probably the right call to make at this point. Give themselves some set-piece potential here. Have the grenades to work with. Having some head armor as well. He can be very good with the AKs. We've seen it for early. He's not a one-trick pony. He can be amazing with the AKs as well, so don't worry about that. We're going to run over 24 here. God sent. They pick this one up. Maybe one step close up. Being the first team coming through in this qualifier. And it looks like they are setting up for maybe a set piece here, but aggressive is JW. But somehow, like I said, Dead Fox can hit his job with the AK-47. He blows JW out of the water there, 504, just like that. My God, what a shot that was. Interestingly, just, just to cut you off, they, they saw Pronax throw away his M4 to grab this gun, but they stopped looking that direction. He's stayed around, so if they slip back that way at all, he's got advantage with the crosshair already gained. Dead Fox jumps down. He's trying to get toward the inside of that dumpster. They're aware. Information. Yeah, exactly. They're they're just trying to bait out the shot right now, just to confirm it. It's a dead fox. He's in that jump there. He's just smoking his point. You can see that. Pronax not known for his orping prowess. will be actually pushing up with his M4. This is actually quite a clever idea. He is by himself, though. It's a bit of a Hail Mary, and he's going to take some damage, so that's going to scare him off a little bit, wherever he wants to push. This dumps through area. This is you fine, see it though. You used too often these days, but yeah, for this scenario, it's okay. That takes away the options of going Ivy. Now, I wonder if they check that. They spread through as if he might still be around, so it wouldn't be unlikely that they do glance in that direction if they go. But right now, elsewhere seems to be more intentional toward B, perhaps. Sticko's already inside of A. He'll be a distraction. The rest already down toward the brown halls, and Sticko's just spraying through smoke. The wall that they've deployed intentionally as a mask to the fact they're not even heading that direction, and it's worked out so far. Flusha just now realizing it's going to head back over to B, but Angel's already pushed up. Down he goes, and this round's looking great for Hellraiser. The one thing is Pronax was pushed so far up. He can be fast on the flank. So Dead Fox on the bomb train has to be aware of this. Angel and Zero so far removed. Pronax, if he finds one and gets on this, he's got a kid as well. If he finds Dead Fox and gets in the defuse, they're far enough away. He can do this. Oh, but he's gone the wrong way. Dead Fox is looking the other direction. Gonna find one, that gives his position away. Needs to hit the shot on Dead Fox immediately, won't do it. Still would have been a chance if he found that kill. Bondic wouldn't have got there, but unfortunately not. Well, there we go then. Here's the POV from Dead Fox. Let's see how sick this was. Boom. JW looks so confident. Like we said, he's getting those, uh, that confidence back. He wants to take these challenges at the start, but Dead Fox, I was speculating at the start. He is very good at the AKs, not just the AWP as well. And that's a great shot for him. Let's just pick up Hellraiser's 11th round here. So they are back into this. And looking at the money forgotten, this is a very important round. This pretty much decides where we go. We tie things up again at 13 13. It's been a very close game already. Or whether Godsend can get a significant lead here and potentially reset Hellraiser's. Yeah, it's definitely back and forth in that sense. And we've got decent money for zero again after what you said. You mentioned going down after the round, so he'll buy in on an AK. It'll be rifles all the way. UMP, but that's offset by the fact that JW once more will have his AWP to go aggressive. Yes. Has a spawn for it. Not quite the best spawn. Pronax is actually a little bit. Okay, now I take that back. He's to his left and a bit far forward, so he's actually in good position. Well, here we go. Then. They want to do that twice after what happened last time? Why not? Lightning doesn't strike twice. <laughs> I guess not. It's going to be this JW looking towards main entrance this time. He did try to go aggressive. I do like that on CT side. It's nice to chuck it in every now and then. But if you get your confidence rattled like that, you maybe just want to just uh, take it easy for a couple of rounds and just cool the jets. And this Angel now will be working towards Ivy. Pronax waiting there, backing up JW, of course. Pronax, yeah, exactly as you say. Patiently backing him up as well, not the aggressive peak. Usually you might try and at least spot down the lane, but. He's more than happy to wait it out. Play the slower pace this time around. Lecker on top of the A site. Let's JW get a little more forward, I guess you could say, in terms of his position with the AWP. So he can watch A main before they even get posted up inside. We'll talk about the slow pay of Godsent, but that's complimentary to the fact that Hellraisers is doing the same and no team wants to give an inch. It's a very straightforward default. 2-2 two, two, plus one way out at Ivy toward the A site for them. Oh, looks like some 
form of execution here. Smokes deployed towards outside as well. Flash is going in. JW can be aggressive with that old Can't land the shot just yet. Bomb will be committed out towards Pop Dog as well. So his instant commitment towards outside, but the bomb has been dropped. Schneider guesses it through that smoke, nails it. And you're dead right. Bomb drop before it gets in toward the plant. They were relying on him with no one else for forward to get that plant on his own. Dead Fox will make it there just in time as well with the smokes. They're dissipating as it goes down. It leaves him in the open. He's got a shot towards Schneider. Watch control room. He doesn't have the angle above. It's Death Row that's trying desperately to find it, but Dead Fox is still staying here. Finally, Lycro gets out there. No one to cover him off. We'll nail it. That lets Schneider get forward out of Z Connector and on top of the bomb train, and things become a little bit awkward for the Hellraiser's positions. Schneider's going to Molotov off. Pop Dog Bondic's going to get countered out by the fact JW's beside him. JW, though, hits a shot out toward Ivy. That keeps him distracted, and it's an AWP, which means Bondic can do everything to turn around and find him, but unfortunately, there's just too many left. <laughs> Flash is just fully committed with no defuse kit on that bomb, so why not? He gets the defuse in, it will be the execution towards outside there from Hellraisers. Like he said, though, Schneider doing a great job there. Spraying through the smoke, delays them, and uh, throws a cat on the pigeons at that point. So, JW, was this a no scope coming in? Oh, okay. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he landed that one, but Schneider did finish things off. There it is, 14-11. And we did say that'd be a difficult round for Hellraisers to lose. That would be a reset after that one. They did have residual cash. Not an abundance of it, though. You can see there's going to be a glow. A UMP in the hands of zero and three AKs, and they are lacking utilities. Just two smokes, man. And a map like Train, that's not really enough. You want to go for something a little bit more simple here. Maybe go towards the upper ramp, try and work a pick at the start of the round. And that's always the hard debate. Do you wait it out with better utility and play for overtime? Or at this point, throw it all in. And this is essentially, all things considered, we know Ecos are possible. This is essentially for the game. It's JW waits for the crossfires on the first. That lets the second one get out, but he knows Flush is at the corner, so he can afford to do that. Flush only gets one, though. Yeah, he had to, he had to commit at that point. He's on one HP, right? If he falls back, the, the UMP is going to take him down regardless. He's hoping he can get that one tap, but uh, it doesn't work out for him. Four on four. I'd say this still fav heavily favors the CTs, considering they have the AWP the, in the hands of JW and the lack of utility for Hellraiser. This is one smoke now. They have picked up a couple of Molotovs, though. And that's smoke towards Ivy. That's all they've got to work with now. It comes down to the firepower. Can they actually start landing some shots here to get them back into this game? Slip a little further into the site. Ebox covered off. Pronax fires. That gives away his position. Angel won't commit back toward it. Instead, Lecro will. Oh, better still. Not only does Lecro find Dead Fox, he finds the bomb. Angel goes down at the hands of Schneider. It's all onto zero. Bomb at the train, and he's covered off. Pronax slides through, and God sent. Well, they've got one round to go. They're feeling it. They could be the first team to go through the major from this qualifier. One round separates them, and the money for Hellraisers sits at around the less than $3,000, about $2,300 average, average, I would say. And Lecro doing fantastic weather, denies the plot, stops them coming outside. You can see Hellraisers so limited in their options there. They actually go down to a four and four. They commit to outsiders, didn't have the utility to actually defend themselves. Lecro sprays them down the connector. They have one more smoke just to cover off that connector area. Maybe they had a chance, but now, all in at this point, Hellraisers. They really don't want to go to the next one. Like you said, so many teams on that side of the bracket will be around that kind of 2-1 area, right? So that could be a real scary prospect for them. 15-11, and to stay alive, the buy comes in. Desert Eagles. Tech Nines, a UMP. Bondic yet to buy. Got the knife in hand for now. I assume he's, he's invested 2,900, so what's he got? Tech Nine as well. So smokes, pistols, and a UMP map. I'm not having too much hope here, but... At this point, maybe you need a little bit of magic to work in your favor. Stick go fast, Tech 9 toward Brown. Angel's already crossed smoke beyond Flusher, so he's at least got something to work with. I think Flusher's aware of it, though, so he'll back away accordingly. Very passive on the A side as well. All to play for. Mm. Oh, yeah. At this point, God said, no, we've got a huge advantage. They know the money's in the bin for Hellraisers. Don't overcommit. Don't give them the chance at those close range. Tech 9's actually. Make something happen here. Smokes towards connector and the bomb train, it seems. And they come. Try and get that bomb down. Let's see what we can do here, boys. Flashes go in. They may be going for a fake here. The bomb's actually going towards Brown Hall, so it's going to be Sticko to sell something. Whatever got sent by, it's another story altogether. Micro away from the smoke has to back off. It's Sticko just getting in there, though, as if it's again once more fake, as if the bomb is going down. It, it is. But it's over at B, and that's going to be. Well played, stick out, finally now found. Schneider will get the shot. They're already rotating over. Fast play from Flusha. He's going to slide out. Zero gets found immediately after taking Lecro. So good trade down to Dead Fox and Bondic. Bondic just rotating in as well now. And the nade's going to take down his teammate. It, High ground, but I think this is done. Flusha waiting it out. Tech 9 does hit a good shot from far, but they're already on it. Nade will cover it off. 
Touchdown and congratulations. It's into the major for God sent. Had a spot. Yeah. Took back the trade, have to qualify, win the minor, come in here, beat Hellraisers yet again, and qualify. Now the dream, imagine they get in Fnatic's group. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, it's still not over for Hellraisers, this minor. They're still in a great position here. 2 1, still need to win one more game. It's not the end of the world, but God's end, 3 and 0. Who would have thought it? One of the underdogs here, the Dark Horses, I would say, and they managed to do it in clean sets at 3 0. And they skipped a few tournaments when the rosters went both directions, to be fair, when it was announced Fnatic would be sending. Like row one direction. It was right before Pro League finals. They decided to practice for the minor instead. Fnatic said, "Well, if he's leaving to go practice the minor, we can't go to Pro League." They had to give up the spot. As a result, it's worked, and it's justified because they are now going to the major.